In this video, I will talk about the mounts you can use with the Zcam E2 F6 and a crazy experiment with a very unusual mount and sensor combination. Here we are again and nothing is sponsored here. I paid for everything by my own, um, like everyone else, except for an adapter I borrowed from a friend. I will show you how to change the mounts, the quality and performance, the pros and cons, and an experiment. I just say medium format. Okay, let's take a closer look. My E2 F6 came with the EF mount, which is very solid. You place the lens and the mount and turn the wheel to lock the lens. That makes the space between mount and any lenses very tight, so you don't have any micro wiggles you maybe know from other mounts or adapters. The mount is electronic and you are able to control focus, aperture and lens stabilization. Be careful and make this in a controlled environment. To switch the mount you have to remove the four screws at the mount. But watch out you don't take the screws at the edges of the camera. Now you can see the sensor. It is behind a protector glass. Place the PL mount with the electronic connection downside and tighten the screws. Place the cine lens at the mount and rotate the ring to tighten everything up. Now you can attach any cinema lenses without any adapters. And the setup is super solid and surprisingly light. You have now the opportunity to choose between photo lenses and cine lenses for your projects. There's just one not so nice thing. It could happen that you accidentally mount it wrong because there is no up and down or right and left. It is symmetric. You could damage the electronic connection. Better don't switch mounts on a rush on set. Let's compare the field of view. The 35mm cine lens has a bit closer view, but is much sharper than the photo lens. And to get a better feeling, I just grab the camera rig and a good friend. <laughs> Now you can get the clear and sharp cinema lens look with no big weight. I could just hold the full rig with my screen and it felt literally like holding the frame. The flexibility to switch mounts than adapters is a big win for me because this opens an opportunity to use any kind of lenses you wanna, wanna use or you already have. So. There are more mounts available for the Z-Cam. There is a Leica M mount available uh, in America, I think. In Europe is just for pre-order. And a Micro Four Thirds mount, which is originally thought for the S6. And this makes really no sense on a full frame sensor. So why should you get the super tiny Micro Four Thirds mount to put it on a on a full frame sensor and I don't know, I wouldn't buy this, but I actually bought it. And uh, guys, it is now time for an experiment to put this Micro Four Thirds on a full frame with a speed booster. So this speed booster has a 0.71 crop and medium format has a 0.78 crop. So that could be very close to medium format. Let's see what's happened. What will happen if you put the Micro Four Thirds with a speed booster on a full frame? So let's see what happens at 35 mm. At open gate there is vignette, but not so much as I thought. It is now a 25 mm view. When you cut off the vignette, it is about 28 mm. In APC mode there is no vignetting, so this setup is a good combination if you want to film 4K 120 frames per seconds with a wider view. 
or you can finally do something with this super 16 mode where you can record up to 170 frames per second and with the Sigma Art 18 to 35 millimeter you get a wider and actually a usable field of view. At about 12 mm you have the full frame 35 mm angle. An unknown way to reduce the image crop. Time to test it outdoors. So I just grabbed the full frame Micro Four Thirds rig, my girlfriend and a horse. What just happened here? This combination generates the same three-dimensional effect like on anamorphic uh, lenses without a stretch. I shot several 6K full frame 60 frames per second and 4K APS-C 120 frames per second <laughs> and the super 60 mode with 170 frames per second. So under the bottom line you get a much wider slow motion shots. I didn't know the Zcam E2 F6 was able to shoot 170 frames per second uh, until I had a nice conversation with Gregor on Instagram. So he watched the channel and just wrote me. If you have any questions or thoughts, you can leave it in the comments or write me on Instagram and this will help everyone for sure. But back to the Micro Four Thirds mount. You can use normal Micro Four Third lenses but they have a much bigger vignetting on full frame. And of course, there's a not so nice thing. With the electronic mount, you are able to control focus and aperture, but not with the cheap speed booster. If you want full control with speed booster effect, you need the more expensive meta bounds. So I was just able to shoot at open aperture and some shots were very muchy. With this interchangeable mount came so many po blah, 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 possibilities. <laughs> because if you think of uh, Sony E-mount, so you can use all your Sony glass again, or a Canon RF mount, or for example a built-in speed booster medium format mount, or a anamorphic squeeze mount, or a tilt shift mount. Anyway, this experiment showed me again that you're really able to create everything with the stuff what's around you. So as long as you are flashed by a story or a mood you want to transfer into a video. I hope you enjoyed this video and if yes then click subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any question feel free to leave a comment or if you want to... Oh, oh. If you want to know more about experiments or rigs or whatever you want to know, feel free to leave it in a comment and have fun uh, shooting your projects and your videos and so on. See you in the next one. Whoa. <laughs>